A lot of times, individuals that don't want nobody up in their business, they don't want them in their business because they got some stuff to hide. Don't pop up at my house. You never know what you might see. You ever notice how some people can get mad when you show up unexpected? It's something to that. And a lot of times it ain't got nothing to do with the fact that they was busy. They had to hide something or tell somebody to get in the closet. <laughs> Spray to get the smoke smell out or put their Ciroc up or whatever the case may be. Hmm. Reality of it, if they know that you're coming, then they can plan for your visit. A lot of times people don't want the unexpected. So we got to understand as children of God that what we do affects somebody else and vice versa. When it comes down to it, I judge you. Meaning I call in question or evaluate your behavior because I want to help you. Because I want to help you. Because guess what? I always tell people, yes, what you do affects other people. But if I'm living my life for God and I'm flowing in the blessings of God and I'm enjoying that and I'm living the abundant life, I want you to experience it too. Right. See, we can't be selfish as children of God. We can't say, oh, well, that's on you. No, if somebody reaches out to you, they're reaching out to you because they want to help you, not hurt you. So guess what? Get past being so defensive and receive the love. A lot of times if we come to a brother or sister in Christ, and we are judging them. We're calling into question or evaluating how they're living. Immediately they want to catch an attitude and get defensive. No, don't do that. Understand and receive the love that is going forward. And so too much mess is overlooked. That's why church folk have the reputation that we do. Because too much stuff is overlooked. We was at a service on last Sunday. Last Sunday, I believe it was, and one of the things that the minister spoke about, he said, you know, the reality of it is you look at the state of the church today, it has a lot to do with how shepherds have allowed so much stuff to go on overlooked in the church. I think about it. Shepherds that have their leaders, and they know their leaders are out of order, and they ignore it, and they don't do anything about it. And so guess what? It begins to spread. And so because pastors have allowed so much stuff to be out of place in the church, they have not done what the Word of God says as far as church discipline and things of that nature. Stuff has just gotten out of hand. But it starts at the top. And so a lot of times, you know, you think about it, we got to get to the point where we realize, you know what, we are in this together. I mean, the reality, people may look at me with a collar on, they automatically put me in a top category. But guess what? I may be in the category of those that's in the clergy, but I'm still part of the body of Christ. Because we're one body. You know, I may be the hand, you may be the foot. The reality, we're still one body. And so, too much mess is overlooked, and that is why church folk have the reputations that we do. Immorality is running buck wild and it must be judged. Time out for accepting it like it's all good. Time out for just overlooking what you know ain't right. Time out for just, you know, he and your brother and your sister talk about certain things and never address it because it's not helping us. And so, overlooking or ignoring the slight of others is not biblical. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you that? Your method is not lining up with the Word of God. To see somebody going through something, to know that they are off track, and to ignore it, one scripture said it's almost like you're in agreement with it. See, we think, well, I ain't say nothing. Well, guess what? Your silence ain't good. Because your silence lets somebody think it's all right when it really ain't. But the Bible clearly gives us instructions in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to read this one from the Amplified Version, so it will probably read different from yours. But we have been given biblical instructions on how to deal with our brother, our sister, the foot, the hand, the toe that's out of order. It says, brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin, any person, it doesn't make a difference. I may wear a collar. I may stand in the position of authority, but guess what? I am not exempt. Now the word of God gives instruction.
instruction on how to deal with those that's in authority. But guess what? A person of the cloth is not exempt from being dealt with. Amen? Amen? And so if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are what? Spiritual. Meaning who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit. You who don't have the big old pole sticking out your eye. Right. right. Okay? Come on, come on, come on. See, because sometimes we want to get the, the, the speck out of somebody else's eye. We got a big old log out of our eye. Mm. It said, if you ain't got your stuff together, then guess what? You ain't the one to restore nobody. Right. Because for real, you end up caught up yourself. But it said, for those of you that know that you're on a path that leads to righteousness, you know that you're on a path that's pushing and pressing, then guess what? You have a responsibility to restore them. It says, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual should set him right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of superiority. Amen? Amen. Just because you ain't doing what they're do doing does not mean that you're better than so don't come with this high-minded attitude when trying to help them. And so it says, you should restore and reinstate him without any sort of sense of superiority. And with all gentleness, keeping an attentive eye on yourself, at least you should also be tempted. So the bottom line is, know that when you're dealing with sin and you're trying to help others, don't think that in the midst of it, that they may not try to jump on you. Come on now. So be mindful. Don't think, oh, I am so far above that that I can never get caught up again. The devil is the liar. Just be mindful when you're out reaching and helping others. But it is your responsibility. Do we understand that? Yes. Can we stop closing our eyes to sin? Sin that we know is actively flowing in individuals' lives. They may get upset with you when you address them in the beginning, but guess what? It's for our own good. Verse 2 says, bear, meaning endure, carry one another's burdens. It should hurt you when you see somebody off track. It should hurt you when you know somebody is caught up in sin. Well, we have become so insensitive because they doing them and I'm doing me. And that is not the way that it should be. Bear one another's burdens and trouble some moral faults. And in this way fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ. And complete what is lacking in your obedience to it. And it says, for if any person thinks himself to be somebody, meaning too important to condescend to shoulder another's load, mm -hmm. when he is nobody, Meaning of superior exception in his own estimation, he deceives and deludes and cheats himself. We can never get to the point where we feel like we are above an individual that may be going through certain things. And so the Word of God instructs us as to what we should do. Now, we got to understand, we can reach out to people mm -hmm. with no problem. Amen? Yeah. We can bring it to their attention, but some people just hard headed. Yeah. We can bring it to their attention, but some people are just straight up yeah. hard headed, don't want to listen, yeah. want to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to understand, you can't make anyone do what's right. But guess what? Don't allow that to be your excuse for not reaching out. See, some people think already, well, bottom line is people, people, they're going to do what they want to do. So guess what? I can't help it, nobody. That is not the right attitude or the mindset. So, of course, we can't make anyone do what's right, but stop using that as an excuse to not say anything from Jump Street. The why brother mentality or the why bother mentality is actually hurting us, the church. 